In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a professional looking Connect the Dodge children's activity book using the BookBolt Studio. And I'm going to show you how to create this book using only three downloads from Creative Fabrica. So if you're someone who struggles with drawing your own illustrations or with graphic design, then stick around because this video is for you. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so judging from my YouTube analytics and my comment section, you guys seem to really like it when I teach you how to create professional looking activity books for KDP. So that's exactly what I'll be doing in today's video. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you're probably aware of the fact that I'm affiliated with BookBolt. And the reason that I'm affiliated with them is because they have an incredible research tool that allows you to find profitable niches to create low content books for. They also have the BookBolt Studio, which is a desktop publishing software that allows you to create and lay out your low content book interiors as well as covers all in one spot. And if that wasn't enough, they also have a puzzle generator, which enables you to create professional quality puzzle books for both adults and kids alike. But the reason that I'm creating this tutorial right now is because for the next few days, BookBolt is getting even better. That's right, the Black Friday sale is back. And from now until November 28th, you can get a six month pro subscription for just $49.99. That's over half off of the original price. And to make the deal even better, if you use my promo code Craig Babin when you sign up, you're gonna save an additional 20%, which brings the six month subscription price down to just $39.99. That's over a 60% savings. I have a link to the Black Friday website as well as all of the details in the description section of this video. But wait, there's more. Now I always have an offer in my description area that enables you to get a one month unlimited download subscription to Creative Fabrica for just $1. But after that month is over, the monthly subscription rate goes up to $29 per month. So that works out to about $350 a year. But from now until December 2nd, you can get a one year all access unlimited download subscription to Creative Fabrica for just $59. That works out to just $4.99 per month. That's a $290 savings off the regular subscription price. And that subscription gives you unlimited downloads to coloring book pages, professional colored illustrations, KDP interiors, tens of thousands of custom fonts, and so much more. And once again, I have a link to that exclusive offer in the description section of this video. Now, for those of you who are watching this video after the Black Friday special has ended, just know that you can still get a one month unlimited download subscription to Creative Fabrica for just $1, as well as save 20% off any BookBolt subscription at any time throughout the year, just by using the links as well as my promo code Craig Babin that I've posted in the description section of this video. And both of those deals are still really good offers. But even with those incredible Black Friday offers, if you're still on the fence about purchasing a subscription to either one of those sites, then allow me to show you exactly what you can create using the BookBolt Studio and Creative Fabrica. If you're ready, let's get to it. Okay, so to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is head over to Creative Fabrica and show you the three files that I downloaded for this project. The first download were these animal coloring pages that I'm going to use for my Connect the Dots interior pages. I also grabbed these finished illustrations to use on the cover of my book. And finally, I downloaded this set of watercolor floral backgrounds that I'm going to use to incorporate into the background of my book cover. Okay, so before we jump into BookBolt, I'm going to need to prep these coloring pages so that they can be used with the dot to dot creator inside of the BookBolt Studio. And to do that, I'm going to have to use another software program. Now I'm going to be using Photoshop, but if you don't have access to Photoshop, then you can just use Photopea. Photopea is a free Photoshop alternative software that you can use right inside of your web browser. You don't even have to download it. All you have to do is head over to photopea.com. I'll put a link to that website in the description section of this video. Everything that I'm going to be doing in Photoshop throughout this video can also be done in Photopea. So let's head over to Photoshop and open up one of these coloring page illustrations. Now I'm not going to do all of them, I'm just going to do one. I just want to give you an idea of how it's done. Okay, so here are all the coloring pages that came with that download. I'm just going to open up one of them. The first thing I want to do is get rid of all the white background. And the reason I'm doing that is just in case you decide later on that you want to use cream colored pages for your interior instead of white. By removing the background, we're leaving that option open. So to remove the background, I first have to unlock the layer. I can do that by clicking on this little lock icon located on the right hand side of this layer. 
Next, I'm going to select my magic wand tool from the left hand toolbar and just click on any part of the white area in the image. With that white area selected, I'm going to go up to the top menu and click on the select heading. From the drop down menu, I'm going to choose similar. Now, with all of the white areas selected, I'm just going to hit my delete key. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is make all of this line art pure black. Right now it's sort of a dark gray. So to change the color, I'm just going to right click on this little image icon in the layer menu. And from the pop up menu, I'm going to choose select pixels. Now that all the pixels are selected, I'll go down to my color swatch in the bottom left hand toolbar and I'm going to double click on it. Inside of the color picker menu, I'm going to make sure that my color is set to pure black. Next, I'm going to grab my paintbrush from the left hand toolbar and then using my right bracket key on my keyboard, I'm going to increase the size of my paintbrush until it's really large. Then I'm just going to paint over all of the selected pixels. Once I'm finished, I'll grab my rectangle selection tool and just click anywhere outside of the artboard to release the selection. Okay, so now that I have the illustration the color that I want it to be, I now have to prepare it for the dot to dot generator in BookBolt. So the next thing that I need to do is duplicate this layer. To do that, I'm just going to select the layer in the right hand menu and then drag it down to the create a new layer icon in the bottom menu. That's this little square with a plus sign in it. Now I'm going to select my first layer or bottom layer and I'm going to lock it and turn it off by clicking on this little eye icon. Next, I'm going to select my new layer and then go over to the toolbar on the left hand side and choose my eraser tool. With it selected, I'm going to use my right bracket key on my keyboard to increase the size just a touch. Now before you start erasing anything, with your eraser tool still selected, go up to the eraser menu at the top of the page and make sure that the opacity of the eraser is set to 100% and that the hardness of the eraser is also set to 100. Now just to make sure that we don't miss any of the black line art that we're trying to remove, I want you to go over to the layer menu and in the bottom menu, I want you to click on the create a new layer icon. Now I want you to move that new layer to the bottom of the stack. Then go over to your color swatch in the left hand toolbar and double click on it and change the color to pure white. Once you've done that, go up and select your bucket fill tool in that same left hand toolbar. If you don't see it, it's under the same icon as the gradient tool. Just click on the little arrow in the right hand bottom corner. Now before you click on your page with your bucket tool, make sure that your new layer, the one you just moved to the bottom of the stack, is still selected. Then just click anywhere on the page. Once the layer is filled in with white, go over to the layer menu and lock it out. Now go back and select your top layer and reselect your eraser tool from the left hand menu. All you have to do now is erase the entire outside bold line of the illustration, like so. Do not erase any of the inside interior lines of the drawing. Once you finish doing that, turn your second layer back on. Now I want you to lower the opacity of that second layer down to 50%. You can do that right here. Now relock the layer. So this light gray outline should still line up perfectly with the interior lines of your top layer. Now all you have to do is turn off the middle and bottom layers and then export this document out as a PNG. Just name it something like Fox No Border. Once you've done that, turn off your top layer and turn your second layer back on. That's the one with the reduced opacity. And export it out as a PNG as well, only name this one Fox Border. Both of those PNGs are now ready to be brought into the BookBolt Studio. So you're going to have to go through this exact same process with every coloring page that you downloaded. Keep in mind that this technique is not just limited to simple coloring pages such as this. You can use this on pretty much any coloring page that you want. If you're going to use a more complicated coloring page like this, just pick the object that you want to use as the connect the dots illustration and just leave the rest of the drawing as it is. So in this drawing here, the kids will connect the dots to create the spaceship and then once they're done, they can just color the entire page. So your book becomes sort of a connect the dots slash coloring book. There are literally tens of thousands of coloring pages to choose from on Creative Fabrica. And keep in mind that you can always mix and match them as well. 
If you want to learn how to do that, watch my two-part series, How to Create Unique Coloring Books to Sell on Amazon. I'll put a link to part one at the end of this video. Okay, let's move over to BookBolt Studio and start creating our book interior. So once you log into BookBolt, to get to the BookBolt Studio, you just click on the Research tab in the top left-hand menu and then choose Create. From the Create menu, choose BookBolt Studio. You'll then be prompted to log into the studio. Just use the same email and password that you did to log into BookBolt. Now, if this is your first time logging into the BookBolt Studio, you'll have to start off by creating a new project. But if you've already been working in the BookBolt Studio, whatever the last project that you were working on will be opened up. So to start a new project, just go up to the Project tab in the top menu, and from the drop-down menu, choose New Project. So for this dot dot project, I'm going to make it a paperback cover and interior. I'm just going to call the project dot to dot. I'm going to set the trim size to 8.5 by 11, the interior paper type to black and white with white paper, and I'll choose No Bleed. As for the page count, I'm going to set it to 84. My plan is to have 40 dot to dot images and then 40 of something else on the back side of each image. Now I'll just hit the create project button. One thing that I want to point out is that regardless of whether you choose bleed or no bleed for your book interior, your book's cover will always have bleed on it, as you can see by the pink area outside of the crop line. The bleed options in the setup are only referring to the interior. Now if I open up my file library, that's this little icon right here, I've already uploaded the images that I'm going to use for this demonstration. I've uploaded them all in their own folder and I called it dot to dot. So I'm going to start by creating the interior first. I'm not going to be creating the entire interior, I'm only going to be doing one spread. Every other page will just involve repeating the same process, only using different images. Now what I'm about to do next is just my personal preference. You don't have to do this. You can lay out your books any way you want to. But I like to make my first page the cover page, which usually just has some elements from the book cover on it, only in black and white. The second page of the book is the copyright page, as well as the spot that I promote my author page. The third page is usually some type of a this book belongs to page. And the fourth page can either be left blank, or if you're putting something on the back side of each image, it can be your first back side. You'll see what I mean by that in just a minute. Either way, I'm going to be starting my first dot dot illustration on page number five. So the first image that I'm going to place on my page is the complete image with the reduced opacity that we created in Photoshop. Now make sure that you have your snap turned on at the bottom of the artboard. I'm going to resize this image so that the black border goes right to the very edge of the green margin guides, like so. Now remember, these interior pages don't have bleed on them, so everything you see in the white area outside of the green margin guides is going to appear in your book interior. That's why I can bring this black border right to the very edge of the green margin guides. Now, I'm just going to go up to this images layer, click on the three little dot icon, and from the drop down menu, I'm going to rename the layer to dots. And then I'm going to lock it. I just want to lock it temporarily until I'm ready to work with it. Now I'm going to bring in the image with the border removed, and I'm going to line it up the best I can to this first image. And after that, I'm going to click on the three dot icon of that layer, and then I'm going to rename it to no border, and then I'm going to lock it as well. Now that both images are pretty much lined up, I'm going to unlock the dots layer, and then select it on the page. Then I'm going to go up to the layer toolbar, and click on the create a connect the dots icon. It's the little one that looks like a letter N. Now inside the connect the dots menu, we have a few options. As for the dot color and font color, since my no border drawing is pure black, I'm going to leave both of these set to pure black as well. For the dot size, I'm going to set this number to 4. And for the font size, I'm going to reduce that to 8. Now both of these numbers will vary depending on the detail of your drawing, so you're just going to have to feel it out. As for the rest of the options, I'm just going to leave them as they are. Okay, to start adding dots, all I have to do is place my cursor over the spot where I want my first dot to appear, and then left click on my mouse. Now two things to keep in mind. You don't want your dots to be too close together or too far apart. Wherever you see the borderline changing direction, you want to make sure that you place a dot in that spot. So places like here, 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 and here. You also want to make sure that if there's a curve between two dots, that you place at least one dot in between them, so that the child who's completing the puzzle doesn't just draw a straight line between the two external dots. 
So for this particular illustration, I would just lay them out something like this. Now if you decide at some point that you want to remove a dot, all you have to do is hold down your Alt key on your keyboard, grab the dot that you want to remove, and then pull it to the side of your artboard. Then holding down your Control key on your keyboard, click on the big X next to that dot. The numerical order of all of the remaining dots will update so that they're all back in order. Once you have all of the dots placed the way you want them, just click the blue Submit button at the bottom right hand side of the page. Now, just lock out this Connect the Dots layer and then hit the Save button in the top menu to save out your work. If for some reason you don't like the way the dots look, you can always delete this layer and then just reload the reduced opacity image back onto your page from the file library and start over. Now if you decide that you want to put some other kind of activity on the backside of each of these Connect the Dot pages, you can do that as well. So the back of this Connect the Dot page would be the next page, which is page 6. Just so you understand, page 4 and this page, page 5, will make up a spread. So if you want to create an activity that ties into this image, then you're going to want to put that activity onto the previous page, not the following page. If you were to lay this book open flat, this would be page 5 and page 4 would be right here. So if you want to insert another activity that goes with this drawing on page 5, then you need to put that activity on page 4. Because this book is targeting 4 to 8 year olds, I might throw in something like a practice template for printing. To create that, I'd start off by creating a grid so that I could line up the template perfectly. So to create a grid, I'll just click on the grid icon in the tool menu, and then in the slide out menu, I'll choose add grid. In the pop up menu, I'll set the columns to 18, and then click OK. And then I'll set the rows to 0, and click OK. Now I'll just collapse the grid menu, and then click on my text tool. From the text slide out menu, I'm going to choose heading. Now from the text toolbar at the top of the artboard, I'm just going to change the font style from extra bold to light. Then I'm going to change the color of the font to medium gray. Then holding down my shift key, I'm going to use my horizontal dash key to create a line about this long. Now I'm going to click off of it and then reselect it and move it up to the second line of my grid. Make sure that it's snapping to the center. While we're at it, make sure that you have your snap feature turned on at the bottom of your artboard. Now while I still have it selected, I'm going to right click on it and choose copy. Then I'm going to click off of it and then right click and choose paste. Now I'm going to take this copy of the line and drag it up to the fourth line on my grid. I want there to be one grid line between both of these lines. Now I'm going to grab my text tool one more time and choose heading, change the style to light and the color to that same medium gray. Next, I'm going to use my horizontal dash key one more time, only this time, I'm not going to hold down my shift key. I want there to be spaces between each dash. I'll make it the same length as the other two lines, and then drag it up so that it's sitting on top of my third line of my grid. Now I'm eventually going to group all of these lines together, but before I do, I just want to line up this dotted line with the serif and the text height of the font that I'm going to use as an example. So I'm going to grab my text tool one more time, choose Heading, and then under the font, I'm going to use the font Josephine Sands. The reason that I'm using this font is because the serifs align with the top of the lowercase letters. Not very many fonts do that. Now I'll just drag this word up and then resize it so that the top and bottom of the letters are just touching my solid lines. Now as you can see, my dotted line is just a little bit too low for the serif. So using my arrow key, I'm going to raise it up just a touch. Okay, so now that that's lined up, I'm going to hide the word fox in the layer menu. Next, using my cursor, I'm going to drag select all three of these lines. I'm going to right click on them and choose group. Then, with the group still selected, I'm going to right click on it and choose copy. Then I'm going to click off of it and then just right click anywhere on my page and choose paste. Now I'm going to drag this copy down the page, making sure that there's one line of the grid between the two copies. Next, I'll click off of that second copy and right click one more time anywhere on my page and choose paste again. 
With the new copy selected, I'll drag it down even further, making sure that it stays center, and then I'm leaving one line of my grid between the two copies. I'll continue to repeat this until I have four copies on the page. Once I do, I'm going to group select them all, and then right click and choose group objects. Now I'm just going to rename this layer to lines and then lock it out. So as you can see, I have one extra grid line on top and one extra grid line on the bottom, so this template is perfectly centered. Now I'm going to go back over to my toolbar menu and reselect the grid icon. And from the slide out menu, I'm just going to remove all grid lines. Next, I'm going to turn the Fox layer back on, select it, right click on it and choose copy. Then I'll click off of it and right click anywhere on my page and choose paste. Now I'll drag the copy of the word down to the third set of lines and make sure that it's all lined up. Then I'm going to go back up to the top word, select it, and in the text menu, I'm going to change the font to all caps. Then I'm going to resize it so that it's touching both the top and bottom solid lines. Now I'm going to lock out all of the layers and I'm going to drag the lines layer to the bottom of the layer stack. Now if you want to stylize this page a little more, go for it. You can add a border to it so that it matches your drawing page. You could add additional clip art that you downloaded from Creative Fabrica, or you can even add directions on how to use these pages. It's entirely up to you. Now once you have this page stylized the way you want it, right click on the page itself in the left hand menu and choose clone this to others. Keep in mind that this is an even page, so that all of your even pages are going to be writing pages throughout the rest of this book. So just select all of the even pages in the page menu. Just be sure to deselect page 2 because that's your copyright page and then click clone. As you can see, every even page now has a writing prompt on it. And all you have to do is go to a page, then just click on the word that you want to change and type in whatever you want. Once you've changed both words, hit the save button in the top menu to save your changes. It's that easy. Okay, let's create the books cover. So the first thing that I want to do is bring a few of the images that I'm going to be using onto my artboard. So to start off, I'm going to add in a solid background color to my cover. And I'll do that by creating a rectangle from my elements menu that's larger than the size of the cover. And when I'm done, I'll just drag the rectangle layer to the bottom of the layer stack. I'm just going to rename this layer to background color. And while I'm at it, I'll rename each of my illustration layers to tiger and lion respectively. And I'm also going to lock them out for now. Now I'm going to reselect my rectangle. Okay, so I have two options here. I can stick with the warm colors and just make my background color either a shade lighter of beige or a darker shade of brown. Either would provide the same contrast against the colors of these characters. Or I can just go in a complete opposite direction and choose a cooler color like blue to provide the contrast. This is really just a personal choice. I use the first option all the time when I'm creating book covers. But for this one, I'm going to go with option 2 and use the cooler color to provide contrast. Now I'm going to hide these two illustrations for just a minute. If you look at a lot of activity books for kids that are selling on Amazon, you'll notice that the covers tend to be very busy. See how on this book cover here the background is just a solid color? All of the activity is up front in the illustrations. Now because they used a solid background color and kept the illustrations fairly small, it actually works for this cover. But you have to be careful. If you make your cover too busy up front, then the viewer's eyes won't know where to look. A busy and colorful cover can be good for a children's book, but you don't want to overdo it. And one way to get around that is to push some of that busyness to the background and just make the details very subtle and monochromatic. If you're not familiar with that term, it just means multiple tints of the same color. Then you just leave the really colorful contrasting illustrations up front, but you keep those illustrations very simple. And I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. So for now, I want to add in a very subtle floral pattern. So I'm going to bring one of the images that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica to my artboard. I'm just going to stretch this out to where I want it to sit on my cover. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 12%. I'll rename the layer to Floral Pattern and then I'll lock it out. When working on your projects in the BookBull Studio, always remember to hit the Save button after you make changes. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is bring a copy of this interior image onto the cover of my book. 
If you watched any of my past videos, you know that I always try to include a sample of my book's interior content on the cover, just so that the customer can actually see what they're buying. The easiest way to do this is just to create a rectangle on your page using the Shapes tool. Make sure the color is white. Next, stretch it out so that it covers your entire page. You want the white edges outside of the black border to be equal all the way around the image. So keep in mind that you have a slightly wider margin on the left hand side due to the gutter. So you don't want your rectangle to go right over to the left edge of the page. Just bring it over far enough so that the white margin is about the same width as all of the other sides. Once you've done that, just drag the rectangle layer to the bottom of the layer stack and then make sure that your other layers are unlocked. Then just group select them all, right click on the objects and choose copy. Now you can relock the top two layers and delete the rectangle from your page. Just make sure to hit the save button at the top of the page when you're done. Now go back to your cover page and right click anywhere on your artboard and choose paste. Reduce the image down in size so that you can get a good look at it. If you notice that the white edge around the image is not equal on all sides, select the rectangle and adjust it. Once you have it looking the way you want it, group select all three layers that you just brought in, right click on the selected objects and choose group objects. Now just rename the group layer to puzzle. When you're done that, drag the puzzle layer below your two illustration layers. Now just roughly resize it and position it to where you want it on the page. Now unfortunately, at the time of this video, you don't have the ability to add a drop shadow behind an image, which blows my mind because it's one of the most basic functions, but hopefully after BookBold sees this video, they'll go and add that feature in. So for now, we're going to have to do this old school. So select the puzzle layer, right click on it, and choose copy. Then click off of it, right click anywhere on the artboard, and choose paste. Okay, so now you should have two puzzle layers both stacked up on top of one another. Bring the new puzzle layer down in the stack so that it's sitting directly on top of the old one. Then lock the top puzzle layer. Now, go onto your artboard and select the bottom one, but don't move it. Just go up to the layer toolbar and change the white swatch to black. That's going to make the entire image black. Now using your arrow keys on your keyboard, move the second puzzle layer a few clicks to the right and a few clicks down. Just so that you can see the edge of it just coming out from under the top image. Now with that black image still selected, go back up to the layer toolbar and reduce the opacity of the image to about 50%. Once you've done that, unlock the top puzzle layer and group select both puzzle layers and choose group objects. Then rename the group layer to puzzle. Now just drag the puzzle layer below the two illustration layers and lock it out. It's always a good idea to lock out any layers that you're not currently working on just so you don't accidentally select them. Don't worry about getting the size of things right at this point in time, because we're going to have to do adjusting later on. For now, we just want to get everything on the artboard. I'm going to turn on both my tiger and lion layers and reposition them to where I want them. I'm also going to turn off my snap feature for a second, just so that I can rotate each of these images outward just a touch. Next, I'm going to bring the little monkey image onto my artboard. I'm going to reduce him down in size and rotate him to the left a bit. I'm going to position him closer to the top of the image, and then I'm going to drag him below the puzzle layer in the layer menu. This will make it look like he's peeking out from behind the puzzle. Now I'm going to rename this layer to Monkey and lock it out. While I'm at it, I may as well bring the elephant character out as well. This illustration will be on the back cover, so I'm just going to shrink it down in size and put it off to the side. I'll rename the layer to Elephant. Okay, so just like the puzzle image, I also want these images to have a subtle drop shadow effect. When I illustrate, I don't normally use drop shadows, but when creating children's book covers, I find that the shadows add depth and dimension to the cover, and that's why I use them. And because the BookBold Studio doesn't currently offer that drop shadow feature for imported images, I'm going to have to do them manually. I'm going to use the exact same process that I did for the puzzle image. For the sake of time, I'll walk you through the process one more time with the line character and then I'm just going to speed up the video for the other three characters to keep the video from going too long. So I'll start by selecting the line, right clicking on it and choosing copy. Then I'll click on my artboard and release the selection and after right clicking I'll choose paste. So now the copy is at the top of the layer stack. I'm going to drag it down so that it's sitting on top of the original copy and then I'm going to lock it out. 
Now, when I click on the line, what I'm actually selecting is the one in behind. The next thing I'm gonna do with the image still selected is I'm gonna go up to the blend option in the layer toolbar and change the blend mode to multiply. That will change the color of the image to the color of the swatch in my color picker, which is black. Now using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just gonna move the image down and over to the right a touch. With it still selected, I'm gonna go up to the toolbar and reduce the opacity to about 30%. Now I'm going to unlock the top line layer and then group select both layers and then right click on them and choose group objects. Next I'll just rename the new group layer to lion and then lock it out. Okay, so now I'm going to speed up the video as I go through the exact same process for each of these other three characters. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is start creating some of the background graphics for the text. I'll start with the background cover. For this, I'm just going to use a rectangle from my elements menu and I'm going to make it a dark blue. I'm also going to create a stroke around it and I'm going to set the stroke color to white. I'll make the stroke about 25 points. Now I actually want a double stroke on this rectangle. I want an outer stroke that's the same color as the fill. So I'm going to select the rectangle, right click on it and choose copy. Then I'm going to click off of it, right click anywhere on my artboard and choose paste. I'll head over to the layers menu and lock up the top rectangle. Now I'm going to select the back rectangle on my artboard and I'm going to change the stroke color to the same blue as the fill. I'm also going to change the stroke weight to 90 points. Now I'll just unlock the top rectangle and then group select both rectangles on my artboard. Right click on them and choose group objects. Next, I'll change the name of the layer to back partition and then drag that layer down until it's right above my floral pattern layer and then I'm gonna lock it out. Now, I'm gonna create a rectangle with rounded corners to sit behind the text that I'm gonna put at the bottom of my front cover. I'm just gonna use a rectangle from my elements menu. I'll set the color to that same blue as my back rectangle and the stroke color to white with a width of around 20 points. Now I want these ends to be rounded off, so I'm gonna set the border radius to about 125 pixels. Just like the back partition, I want this rectangle to have a double border. So with it selected, I'm gonna right click on it and choose copy. Then I'll click off of it, and then click anywhere on my artboard and choose paste. Now I'll go up to the top layer menu and lock up the top rectangle layer. Then I'll just select my back rectangle on my artboard and go up to the stroke color and change it to that same blue color I used for the fill. I'm also going to change the stroke weight to about 65 points. Once that's done, I'm going to unlock the top rectangle and then group select both rectangles on my artboard, right click on them and choose group objects. Now I'll just rename the layer to front partition, lock it out and drag it down so that it's sitting on top of my back partition layer. Now I'll save out my document. I have one last area that I need to create a graphic for as a background for my text and that's this area right here. I'm going to use a star badge type shape from the elements menu. And as a way to tie in some of the other colors from my animal illustrations, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool from my color picker to sample the pink from the lion's ear. You want to be using a fairly minimal color palette when creating your book covers. So always try and reuse colors from the other pieces of artwork that are on your page. I'm also going to put a drop shadow on this image as well. I'll just use the same technique that I use for all of the other drop shadows. Once again, I'll unlock both layers, group select them on my artboard, right click on them and choose group objects. Then I'll just rename the layer to pink partition, lock it out and drag it down so that it's sitting on top of my puzzle layer. Okay, so now it's time to start adding in some text. I'll start with the back cover. I'm just gonna copy and paste some random blurb that I got from another book on Amazon. I'm just doing this for this example. I don't recommend copying someone else's text. That's plagiarism. I'm going to use a rounded font called Baloo by 2 
and I'm gonna set it to a semi-bold 600 into the color white. Now, I'll resize and center that elephant character and then upload my trademark at the very bottom of the page. The reason that I'm using a rounded font is because the largest text on my front cover needs to have a softer feel to it, kind of like a bubble font. And I want to keep that font consistent throughout my entire book cover. When filling this text in, just make sure that you're promoting your author page URL on the back of your book cover as well. I'll just rename the text in the trademark layers, lock them out, and drag them down in the layer stack so that they sit just above the back partition. The next thing I'm going to create is the text for the bottom of the page on the front cover. This is just going to say something like for ages 4 to 8. I'm going to use that same font that I used on the back cover. Once I've sized it the way that I want it, I'll lock up the layer and drag it down so that it's sitting on top of the front partition layer. The text over this star badge image will say something like over 40 images. Again, I'm just going to use that same font. All of these fonts are justified center and the front page fonts are all in uppercase. Keep in mind that when it comes to fonts, you can always play with the font size, line height, and character spacing. Again, I'm just going to lock out this text layer and drag it down into the layer stack so that it sits above the pink partition. You should always try to keep your layer menu clean and in order when you're creating your books. Okay, so now it's time to create the main text. This will be the largest text on the cover and it's just going to say dot to dot. I'll be using the same font which is blue by 2 and I'll be making this text style bold 700 as well as white. I'm going to make this particular text two different sizes. The two dot words will be around 380 pixels and the word 2 will be reduced to about 300 pixels. To reduce the size of any letter or combination of letters, just highlight and select the letters you want to reduce with your text tool and then reduce the size in the text size drop down menu. I'm also going to apply a stroke around this font. I want to try and tie in more colors from my illustrations, so I'm going to use the dark brown from the shadow of the lion's mane. Now I want to have a background for this text that follows the form of the font. So I'm just going to use the same technique that I did to create the drop shadows. I'm going to select the text, right click on it and choose copy. Then I'll click off of it and somewhere on my artboard right click and choose paste. I'll go up to the layer stack and lock out the top copy. Then I'll select the bottom copy on my artboard, go up to the stroke color swatch and using the eyedropper tool in my color picker, I'm going to sample the lightest part of the lion's fur. Now I don't want the background of this text to be quite so dark. So I'm just going to lighten it up a bit by moving the slider closer to the white. Now I'm going to increase the stroke width to around 115 pixels. Once I've got that done, I'm going to unlock the top text layer, group select both layers on my artboard and then right click on them and choose group objects. Then I'll rename the new layer to dot to dot. Now I'm going to want a drop shadow on this text. So I'm going to go through that same process one more time. Copy the layer, paste the new layer in behind, lock out the top layer, select the bottom layer on my artboard, and change all of the colors to black in the layer toolbar. Then using my arrow keys on my keyboard, shift the background down and over to the right just a bit. Once I'm done, unlock the top layer, group select both layers and right click on them and choose group. Now I'll just rename the layer dot to dot and reposition it to where I want it. Once I'm done, I'll lock it out. Okay, so the last piece of text that needs to go on this cover are the words baby animal. And that's going to go directly above the dot to dot text. For this text, I'm going to use heading text, the default open sans font, and I'm going to set it to extra bold and white. I'm going to scale it down to the size I want, and then I'm going to bring the letters in closer together using the character spacing tool. I'm also going to want a drop shadow on this text as well, so I'll do that now. So once I have the drop shadow all set up and the layers have been grouped, renamed and locked, it's now time to reposition everything on the cover. So I'll do that now.
Okay, now that I have everything where I want it, I'm going to add a few more details to the background of the cover. Since this is an animal themed book, I'm going to start by adding in some paw prints. I'll just use the paw print shape in the elements menu. I'll sample the background blue and then just make the print slightly darker. Then I'll just resize the paw print and reposition to where I want it. Now I'll just duplicate this layer a few times and place these prints randomly all over the cover. I'm also going to resize each print so that they're all different sizes. Once I have them all spread around, I'm going to group select them all and then group them together. I'm also going to reduce their opacity down to about 60%. This is what I was referring to earlier in the video. Make your backgrounds busy, but keep them subtle. That way you can keep your foreground simple while still having that busy look to your cover. Okay, now this looks pretty good, but I need to make this cover pop a bit. And unfortunately, I can't do what I need to do in this software. So I'm going to have to go back to Photoshop or Photopea, whichever one you're using, to do it. So what I'm going to do is turn off everything in the foreground and just leave the paws, the floral pattern, and the background layer showing. Now I'm going to go up to the page tab in the top menu, and from the drop down menu, I'm going to choose export to PDF. That PDF file will save in the downloads folder of my computer. Now I'll go and open it up in Photoshop. The first thing that I want to do is add some saturation to this background. I'm going to do that by going up to the adjustment tab in the right hand of the layer menu. If you don't see it there, you can open up the menu by going up to the Windows tab in the top menu and choosing Adjustments from the drop-down menu. So inside of the Adjustment menu, I'm going to select the Hue and Saturation adjustment. I'm just going to bring the saturation to about 25. Now I'm going to go back to my Layers menu and using my Ellipse tool from the left-hand toolbar, I'm going to start placing some random size ellipses all over my page. I'm just going to use a navy blue color for them. I'm not going to create too many. When doing this, just try to remember where you have foreground content placed on your cover. There's really no need to put ellipses in those areas because they'll be covered by the content anyway. Once you have all of your ellipses laid out, group select them all and then right click on the layers and choose merge. Now what you need to do is change that new layers blend mode to color dodge and then reduce the opacity of the layer down to around 50%. Once you've done all that, just export this image out as a PNG to your project folder and then upload it to your BookBolt file library. Now just place the image onto your artboard and resize it. Make it so that it's slightly larger than the size of your artboard. Then rename it to BG and lock it out. Next, drag it down in the layer stack so that it's sitting directly on top of those three background layers that are still turned on. Now, turn all of the foreground elements back on. So if you turn this new background layer on and off, you can clearly see what a difference that a little saturation in conjunction with those color dodged ellipses can make to your book's cover. Remember, the reason you're adding that additional detail to the background of your cover is to try and add some depth to the overall composition. Now, delete the background layers that you're not using and hit the save button. Once you finish creating all of your interior content, just go up to the project tab in the top menu and from the drop down menu, choose download this project RGB. Your finished project folder will download into the downloads folder on your computer. It'll be packed in a zip file. Once you extract it, you'll find that there are separate PDFs for your book cover and for your book interior. And both of these files are ready to upload to KDP. Okay, so hopefully this video has given you some pretty good ideas on how to create your own Connected Dot Children's Activity Books to sell on Amazon. And remember to take advantage of the limited time Black Friday specials that are going on right now for both BookBolt and Creative Fabrica. I have all of the details for both of those sales in the description section of this video. And if you want more step-by-step -step tutorials showing you how to self-publish low-content books on Amazon, then be sure and check out my Self-Publishing 101 playlist. It has everything you need to get started. And you can find a link to it right here. Until next time, take care.